Hello and welcome to this special edition video on Quantum Spark Alliances. I'm really excited to share with you that we have now released R81.10 for Gaia Embedded. So you can now upgrade your 1500, 1600 and 1800 series to the latest and greatest of R81.10. And what I've got in this video is quickly show you how to upgrade that using the upgrade file that is now available to you. So let me just show you first the SK article where you can go ahead and download the file, where you can access the documentation, where you get to see what features are now available in this latest version. So let's jump straight to it. Okay, so first things first, as I mentioned, this is the SK179004. So you can access this secure knowledge article in order to download the software directly from here. You will also be able to see uh, details around what's new in this version. If we scroll down here, this is where you're going to download the image for the 1500 and then here for the 16 and 1800. So you've got the package ready to go. And importantly, the documentation in regards to this specific software version. So the release notes, the locally managed admin guide, and just to be clear, this version currently uh, is only supporting locally managed and uh, SMP managed devices. You've got the CLI guide, and you've also got the appliance features and no limitation article here as well. So SK178604, very important SK. Here you will to see what features are supported uh, and what limitations apply to this RIT 1.10 version. Hopefully you're all excited as much as I am about this version. So let me jump straight to my gateway and we can take a look at how to perform the firmware upgrade. Okay, so I've just logged into my 1590 appliance, as you can see, and currently I'm running version R80.20.40. So you can see this is uh, the latest version in the R80.20 uh, software version that applies to the Quantum Spark appliances. What I'm going to do is head straight to device on the left hand side here and then go to system operations. And you can see here the section firmware upgrade. And as I mentioned, we're going to do a manual upgrade and upload the image to the appliance. So we want to click next. In Pretty straightforward. We want to upload the file that I've just downloaded from the SK article. So it's this version here. Open, click upload, and we'll give it uh, a few seconds. It probably takes about a minute for it to get uploaded, if that, and then we're good to go. Okay, so the upload has finished, so we can click next. And it's giving you information about the current version and what you're going to be upgrading to. So make sure you're fully aware of the process that you're doing. And then we'll click next to start the upgrade process. Uh, this is going to take a couple of minutes. So we'll let it go through the process and we'll come back to it once it has finished. So you can see here the upgrade has completed and the appliance is rebooting. So we'll give it uh, a minute or two there. As you can see, there's a countdown and we'll come back once the gateway has finished rebooting. Okay, so the gateway has finished uh, rebooting and you can see here it's now running version R81.10 and this specific build number, which is the first GA image to be released. And We'll just quickly go through just a couple of things that were mentioned in the uh, what's new section for these locally managed quantum spark gateways. So one of the first things that I saw in the SK was around um, SSL inspection. So if I go to um, access policy and let's just turn on traffic inspection, one of the cool things about it in here is around the assets that can be um, or you want to have inspected, so desktop, laptop, 
and we can also look at other assets. So now you can look at other network devices that you want to be uh, inspected. So you now have full control of the uh, inspection of other network connected devices. That's uh, pretty cool there. We've also got the ability to bypass assets. Over here, we've got uh, the Mac OS devices that can be bypassed for inspection. One of the other new features mentioned was TCP dump via the uh, GUI interface here. So let's go to our troubleshooting and tools section. And we can see here we've got the TCP dump tool. Let's just run that and see what that actually looks like. Okay, so we can come in here, put a command in, we can select our interface we want to dump uh, from, and we can see some stuff going. And okay, so we can click to packet capture over here, and we can then stop it and download the file as well. Okay, that is actually very very useful for troubleshooting purposes that we can initiate that from from this end and one of the other features and i'm going to finish on this one is the updatable objects inside the policy so we can go to access policy and go to the policy section and let's just add a new rule in here we should be able to see the upsell of objects so it's going to be under the destination updatable objects and actually what we need to do is import the objects in just like we have to do uh, with the main train Gaia software so here we go we click here that is going to open up the window with the new objects okay so I can see there are a lot of different services inside here. Grouped in categories, we've got the uh, geolocations there as well. So we have got a huge database of updatable objects. All right. So I'm not going to go into any other features, but I just wanted to, while I was logged in, uh, have a quick look. I'm sure you'll get a, a, a better chance to have a play around and see what's new but i just want to put this video out there so you're able to go in and have a look at the latest version that is available thank you very much for watching and i hope this was useful